Welcome to the Daily Brief, where we'll go over the action in the market for Wednesday, December 7th, and then we'll see how things look for Thursday, December 8th. And it was kind of a slow day, not necessarily surprising, because we had had the big down days both Monday and Tuesday, and for the market to take a breather right now is not necessarily really all that surprising. Our ADX continues to be below 20, so it shows that we're in a trendless environment as we're shifting from a positive environment back over to everything, at least technically, except for the ADX. We're looking pretty negative right now. I don't have as many charts to show you about the S&P 500 today. Some interesting things are happening in other markets that I'll try to point out, but we were down but not very much in Wednesday's session. We haven't had a positive day yet in December. And there's some things that'll be happening, not necessarily in Thursday's session, but Friday we have the PPI coming out. Next week we'll have the CPI coming out. We'll have the FOMC meeting. Those always produce a lot of excitement as far as the markets are concerned, either positive or negative. But right now the market at least in Wednesday's session, just settled down a bit. So let's talk about what happened. Right at the open, we had a pretty much flat open with a negative slant to it. Prices didn't go very far from the unchanged level. And that was kind of the, the whole day right there. We tried to go up a little, down a little, but it didn't really happen. As the day went on, we did try to go up a bit, but we hit resistance at the daily pivot, which was at 39.54, but then we quickly fell back from that and prices fell below the unchanged level and we went negative. We chopped sideways after that from pretty much the rest of the day. We were slightly negative. We never did go back into positive territory. And at the close, we were down 0.19% and below average volume as we've been seeing lately. The technicals, as I stated, are pretty much negative across the board. It's just suggesting that we're not really trending right now because of inflation and interest rates. That's continues to be what the market is really fixated on. And then if we get any Fed speak, there wasn't any that I could find on Wednesday, but they're probably going into lockdown mode here pretty quick where they're not able to give interviews or write articles or ask questions or answer questions or things like that. So we may not get much Fed speak before the meeting. Here's the interday chart where we had pretty much a flat open. We did try to get up to the daily pivot, but that acted as resistance. We fell back and we spent most of the day, we went a little bit positive there for a while, but much of the day was spent chopping below the unchanged level. So in Thursday's session, you'll notice that the pivot points are going to be pretty close to each other. If the market gets going up or down, we're probably going to hit those levels pretty quick. All right, what are some comments that we can make? The PPI, as I said, will come out on Friday. The CPI comes out next week, as well as the FOMC meeting. And then we had another spike in the equity put call ratio. And really, if you think about this, can you blame the market for doing that? It looked like we were going positive. It looked like we were having a Fed pivot, and that has pretty much all been given back. We didn't see a lot of price action in Wednesday's session, but the equity put call ratio really spiked up because people are trying to hedge or they're taking directional bets that the market's going to go down. So they're buying more puts than they are calls. The US dollar declined. Sometimes that gives support to stocks, and interest rates fell. That gives support to stocks, but it didn't help in Wednesday's session. And internationally, the Reserve Bank of India, they raised rates 35 basis points. They're now at 6.25% for their rate. And then the Bank of Canada also raised rates 50 basis points, and they're currently at 4.25%. So this is also happening internationally, not just in the U.S. Most of the charts that we have are negative. And on a short-term basis, we are extreme negative as far as the Stoke RSI and the Williams percent are. These are pretty touchy indicators. So the fact that we've had three down days, strong down days, especially this week, has really shifted those indicators to extreme negative. We don't have any intermediate term indicators at this time. 
We still have our yield curves that are inverted that's suggesting economic weakness going forward and projecting out from here. Sentiment still remains positive. We're still in the green area. We haven't even gone back to neutral yet. Even with the massive spike in the equity put call ratio and the down days that we've had, folks are they're staying more positive. Now, they're not extreme, but you would think the sentiment would be a little bit more negative than it is. We had the weekly MBA mortgage application index. We saw another decline. Last week, it was down 0.8%. This week, it was down 1.9%. The labor productivity, it was up 0.8%. That was more than expected. They thought it was going to be up 0.3%. The first time we had this reading, it was up 0.3%. So that's what the market was expecting. They came out with the final reading, and it was pretty, pretty hot in that. And unit labor costs were up 2.4%. But that was less than the estimate of 3.5%. Consumer credit. A lot of people, unfortunately, are having to live off of credit right now to buy food, to buy gas, to just live life. They're going deeper and deeper into debt. Some folks are having to really do this. Consumer credit was up $27 billion, a little bit more than the $26.5 billion that they thought. The last time we got this reading, it was at $25.9 billion. Our trend, it's still in the process of turning negative. It's a little slower. It hasn't switched over as quickly. The red line's a little bit above the green line, so we could say it's negative already, but it's not real decisive at this point. We're still below 20. Our bias continues to be negative with the down day, and the last number of days have been negative, so our momentum has switched negative. Here's the chart, just in case you're seeing this for the first time, where we've been tracking a, a similar path to what happened through 2006 to 2008. That's the green, it's green, my goodness. That's the yellow line right here. The white line is what the S&P is doing now, updated as of last Friday. And about this time, according to this model, we really started to go down. We've been going down now, and we're under the 4,000 level. You can see the scale over on the left, and we've been seeing some weakness now. Are we going to match back up closer to what has already happened in the past? As I stated before, a week ago, it looked like, no, we might break out of this. We might actually set something that's more positive, but with the down days that we've been seeing in December so far, we might be coming back down to match up with what's happening here. Not saying that's what will happen, but we need to be aware of this and we need to prepare because the market's on the defensive right now. If you're in long positions, we haven't really switched over full-blown negative yet because of our ADX. But if you're a little more aggressive with that, you might already be trying to take advantage of some downward movement. Then the VIX, where it's going back up slightly, but we're not at this spiking level yet. And according to this chart, that still may happen yet ahead of where we're at right now. Here's our trend where you see the dark black line. It is declining. It's below 20 and declining. The red and the green line, they're just about on top of each other. So it's not real decisive. When this turns back up and either... and let's say that we do continue to be negative, the red line should go back up, the green line will go down, and that will help the ADX become more positive, first cross above the moving average, and then back, cross back above 20. Now, if we see some upward movement from here, we might spend some more time actually chopping sideways. Here's the BPI. It's no longer extreme, not very much. And this still, on a positive side, it's continuing to hold up, even with prices going down, we're not seeing this move real drastically like we have seen before. That's the positive side. But on the negative side, we're at a pretty extreme reading and coming off of that now. And if you look at other times when this happened, this was the high back in August. This was the high back last spring, even though we didn't get extreme. This was the high early spring when we turned back down. So, we want to be on the right side of whatever this indicator is trending, and it's turning much more negative right now. Here's our look at the triple exponential moving average. That's the red line. It's starting to roll over a bit, and the double exponential, so it's a little bit slower. The double exponential moving average is still 
providing some support. Here's the equity put call spike. We spiked recently here, and we're just about at that same level again. So this just means that the market is pretty gun shy, which you can't blame. And they're buying a lot more puts than they are calls. And with our five period look at that same chart, it is starting to increase again, where if we were in a healthier environment after we spiked, we would want to see this continue to go down. It's not doing that. It's actually starting to turn back up. Here's our daily chart where we are still below this pivot. When we're above the pivot, and, and these last for a month, so this is for all of December. When we're above this, that's more positive. When we're below it, that's more negative. Well, we're a little bit below it, but still kind of at the turning point or the nice edge, if you will. Are we going to go back up from here or are we going to go back down? And then at the bottom, we are still below average with our volume. Here's our moving average tree. We're also camped out right along the 100-day moving averages, both the exponential and the simple. And you see they're pretty much right on top of each other. And price is pretty much right on top of that. So that is also another line in the sand, if you will, where we might fall down below that or we might be able to bounce up and get some support from that. Still below us are the 50 period moving averages and those are pretty important. So if we start to fall, are we gonna lose this exponential moving average? But the one that most folks use is the green one down here, which is the simple moving average. Here's the new highs, new lows. We are seeing a real contraction of new highs and a little bit of expansion with new lows. And so that's turning our five period moving average down and we're flat to starting to decline with our 10 period. Here's the FIB chart. I tried to extend some of these FIB levels. This is very short term. This goes calculates from the August high down to the October low and then from the September high down to the October low. And we're still above this 50% retracement with the longer term FIB level here, which is at about 3907 or so. So that may act as support if we continue to fall. Here's longer term, we're kind of in no man's land. If we go back to the COVID low to the all time high, and then a significant high that we set back in 2021 to the all time high, we're still below this which had been acting as resistance. We broke through that, but then we came right back down. And then we have other levels at about the 3824 level, two levels that are right on top of each other. 3824 to 3826 is what these are calculating. Another thing that's kind of interesting is oil prices are really retreating. We're down at 72. So you have the stock market going down and oil going down. So the correlation between the two is pretty significant right now. Gas, this might make you more happy as far as what's happening from a consumer standpoint. We're really seeing gas prices starting to come down. And heating oil, again, as it's starting to get colder, it's still expensive, but at least it's not as high as it had been. And bonds have been holding up fairly well. They had a good day on Wednesday and the total bond ETF was up 0.87%. So we're starting to come back up, which is pushing interest rates down. Here's our world bond index. Also, after coming back up and breaking through this resistance, we're starting to see some improvement. And then looking at the yield, where we topped out and we've been coming down with the 10-year yield. And pretty much all of the yields that we're looking at, from the 2 all the way to the 30, are showing an overall decrease but we still have an inverted yield curve. So what's our outlook for Thursday? The technicals, they're negative. Can't really get around that. All the charts are just not looking very healthy right now. We only have weekly jobless claims coming out in Thursday's session. And then the whole list of geopolitical events with inflation and interest rates being the real concern. Um, oil, because it seems to be in a pretty hefty downtrend right now. We probably won't get any Fed speak until next week. And then any of the other events on here could quickly come to the forefront. So our scenarios, not quite going with the down scenario yet because of the ADX, but there's still a lot of headwinds. And if we see more weakness, we'll probably switch over to a more negative stance because the technicals are negative. Not really going with the positive scenario now because we're in a pretty negative 
technical environment. And we still have lost, we're right at the 100 day moving average, but we've lost other moving averages as well as pivot levels and fib retracements. So we're going with the sideways right now by we, I mean, I, this is what I'm concluding myself because the ADX is going down, we're below 20 and the red line is starting to kind of go above the green line. So our conclusion, the S&P overall, it's negative, short-term negative, and we're showing some slightly oversold conditions. Intermediate term, it's negative and nothing is currently oversold right now. Long-term, we're still negative because we're below the 200-day moving average. And because we're still below that moving average, it's shifting things back more negative again, where they had been improving. Thank you. Have a wonderful day on Thursday. This will be the only video that I post today. And I hope everything goes well for you. And I'll talk to you in the next video.